Hello everyone, Hassan Akbar is here. This is a tutorial video on forms. Um, a little bit of explanation about what I did. I created a folder here, uh, week 11, and I create two resources here um, I for my buttons. As you can see, I created a simple buttons here, submit and reset on Microsoft Word, and I use snippy tools to actually create a JPEG pictures. So these are what I'm gonna use later on. Just wanna tell you what I did here. So I'm gonna close this up. Uh, let's quickly, all right, don't save. Uh, let's quickly search, uh, which is I did on HTML form samples. So as you can see, there's different kind of forms. We're gonna, we can pick one and start from there. And uh, we can add even more uh, fields or components to the form. You can see there's, uh, all different kind of uh, forms here. Uh, some of them used uh, tables, as you can see, like this one. Um, let's create something like this. So it has like last name, first name, maybe we can add the password uh, here. There's an address, uh, there's a comment section, email, phone, zip code, uh, country. There's a, a drop down menu here, so we can actually create that. There is a gender, we can use a uh, checkbox. Uh, instead, we can change that. We, we can have birthdays here uh, with different formats. So I'm gonna start with something like this and uh, we take it from there. So start, uh, for a start, I use uh, Visual Studio Code uh, myself. Uh, you can use anything you like. You have all other options. Uh, I find this really easier to use. So I'm gonna open the folder I created. Here is week 11 and here it is. I have my, my two pictures uh, going on here. I actually open in the separate uh, uh, Visual Studio Code. Here we go, so I have the week 11. I have my resources here, reset and submit. I'm gonna create an index file really quick, HTML. And I'm gonna implement my structure or DOM here so you can have your head, tags and body and HTML. A little bit of indentation would be nice that we can see things better. Let's call this week 11 or forms. I'm assuming you guys study a little, so I'm just gonna jump right into that. Uh, let's uh, open that. So, okay, so first when we start, let's take a look what we wanna create. Obviously, we wanna create the form, so first thing we need, let me just put that on the side, that we can uh, see it all the time. Here we go, that's not bad at all. Uh, let's put this here. All right, so I'm just gonna minimize this so we can have a better view right there. All right, so we're gonna start a form. So obviously we need a form tag. There we go, I'm gonna open it up, nice and neat. And since this one includes a table, and it, this would be a good review on your table tags as well, uh, we're gonna start with creating also a table. Right there, right? So look at this, we don't care about how many rows we have here, but uh, column wise, we have one, here is two, uh, three, and four. So in total, we need four uh, basically columns uh, in order to create this kind of form. Uh, we're gonna start with a first table row right there. And uh, as you can see, this is bolded. It's uh, is a good choice to go with uh, T, edge tag right here and let's start with a label right so we know what the label is and uh, we are going to create our first label just gonna say for let's call it first name and we are going to put uh, here our First, I'm gonna change the order here. So I'm gonna go first name and last name. So the last name and first name it doesn't matter really, right? So that is that, and uh, we also, all right. So this has to go inside my table row. Right, 
let's paste it here so nice and neat let's save that let's take a look what this looks like so far and uh, the way you get this i actually run this on the, my local server uh, sorry a local host uh, using xamp here and um, we're just gonna simply go to that folder because the location i saved it is there right so you can see your first name uh, ready to go right since we using tables it's, uh, let's uh, have some borders here we all know how to do that uh, we are going to open the style section all right caps and we're gonna just for now have some borders for td th and the table itself let's do that and let's just put the border in all right so one pixel is enough you can see enough of it solid black you can change that later on so let's do that and um, what else so let's refresh this there we go so i can see all of it um we're gonna look at the sample i have i think is here um these tables uh borders all collapsed so let's do that border all right one border collapse there we go and collapse right there ready to go let's take a look there we go so all good uh what else let's put some margin here make it margin simple simple 10 pixel all around the document and a padding to keep things neat and clean all right um if you like to select the font you can do that like let's go font family let's go with Arial. all right so that is a good start you can add more to it right there so i have neat and uh, nice style to go uh, now let's go and uh, create our let's go back to our sample here so we need a one input here let's do that so this one uh, gonna be another I'm gonna use that TD tag here right and we are going to go with the input all right so we have the input here and uh, we have to select the type. I, I try to cover all sort of types uh, for input for this video. Here we go. So let's go with the basic text. As this is a text coming in, um, we gonna ID that. Same thing for simplicity, first name. And um, let's create a name here to store those data. Uh, when we need it and that is that let's, let's save that and see what's happened so far so you can see that box is created but remember we need um one two three four uh columns so what i'm gonna do i am going to uh go to column span and uh let's put that for three so we, we have we're gonna occupy three cells here and one there, a total of four. Uh, it does not show that much, but uh, or anything at the moment. But uh, later on, you'll see how that works. All right, uh, so far so good. Uh, we're gonna repeat this simply for the next field because it's pretty much the same. It would be the last name, so I'm gonna put that L. A bit of modification. All right, last name. Same thing, text, last name, and last name. Save that. All right, so, so far so good. We are going to have one for the password. And for the password, all right, so we're gonna put password here. So let's call ID and password. I have to all right, password here. Password there and password there. All right, uh, let's save that and refresh this page. And you can see the password. The problem with the password is that everyone can see it. 
So the type is kind of wrong, so we're gonna change the type. Let's go and see um, what we can select. We can set it to password. So in that case, when you, let's refresh the page really quick. See now it become hidden in a sense that you can't really see it or it's just star or asterisk or whatever you actually um, see here. It seems like a dot at the moment, depends on the browser, obviously. All right, so we're gonna save that. Oh, no, no, not that. There we go. Now, the next things we're gonna do is take a look at the forms we desire to create. So there's an address bar here. So we're gonna, we're gonna drop this because we have something similar here for saving time. And we're gonna go create this, which is a little bit more challenging because we have, we have to fill one, two, three, four uh, cells here. So let's create uh, this tag. Uh, all right, so let's start with the PR, the next order of business. And by look at this, we have two, uh, we, we need to use two TH and uh, basically two uh, TD here, easy peasy. Uh, that's okay, so we're gonna have a two TH. All right, one here and uh, one TD. Description. All right, and uh, another th, and another th. Right, no problem. All right, so far so good. Um, for this one, it's pretty much the same as a label here. Just gonna copy this. We need two labels, so one here and one there. No problem. So this would be uh, the city. And uh, this will be, okay, let's call it the city here. And let's uh, change that to province, or if you wanna keep it state up to you, I'm gonna change it to province since we are in Canada. All right, province it is. Right, so that is that. Let's take a look, see what we created so far. Refresh the page. There we go. So we have that and that. So now we need our uh, input field here. So let's have that. Uh, we can use the same as uh, this one we created. Um, but okay, let's just type it in easier that way. All right. So we're gonna have an input, and we can set the type by text. And let's ID that um, city and uh, name it also city. And we can also set a value here that it shows whether we're in Toronto, we can assume Toronto. All right, and close the input. All right, so let's save that and see what it is. There we go. So you can put the value here that it shows up initially and people can go and modify it. It's up to you. So that's one way to go. I'll try to show everything possible. And we're gonna do the same thing for the province. So just gonna copy that and paste it there, right? So we're gonna call this province. A little bit of warm up. Province. And let's say you can send that to untap. Here we go. All right, so save it up. Let's take a look, see what. All right, so the form is getting bigger. You can change the size of those if you like. Let's say for the province, we can change the size to five. And as you can see, this becomes smaller. So you can actually control. Uh, the size, like you want to make the, let's say first name bigger. Uh, we can put like 50 maybe, let's see what it looks like. There we go, so you can actually occupy the whole uh, thing here. Let's do that and be kind of consistent for all of it. All right, password, let's keep the password the same size. All right, so, so far so good, we create 
uh, those fields. Let's organize a little to make it neat. All right, so far so good. Uh, let's look at the next things we're gonna do. We're gonna do the country. We have a drop down menu button. So we are going to open our TR right here. And obviously we need our TH. So a little bit of copy pasting here. <coughs> Excuse me. And here we're gonna put a country. Right. So let's take a look, see what we created. Now let's save that first. Right there. So we're good to go for our TD tag. The next section, we are going to need a select tag, right? So we're going to give that user option to select from. All right. So select. Let's name that. Oh, we're gonna name it country, why not, right? And um, let's give them a couple of options to go for. All right, so option one, we're gonna give it a value of one. Call it US. And let's copy paste that, let's say four times. That, that, that. Four is enough. Look, you got the idea here. Two, three, and four. And let's change that to US, I don't know, Canada. Oh, I delete the wrong thing. Here we go. Mexico. And uh, I don't know, Brazil, maybe. Right, so let's save that and refresh and you can see you have that. All right, so we have to also merge these cells. We know we have to do this. So we're gonna go to our TD tag here and uh, let's go call span and let's put three, right? Three and one, four and refresh, right? So we have that. You can make this bigger by the size if you like. Let's leave it like that. Uh, we can do a couple of adjustments later. Right, so this is what we did. Just more neat. All right, so this section is done. Let's see what to do next. All right, take a look at this. We're gonna have our phone number, why not? So quickly, we are going to open our new table row right there, same bit. Let's copy paste our label to save time. So here it is. Let's call it a phone number. Or whatever you like to call it. And um, it says phone country area code. We're gonna keep the same format, phone country code. Challenge yourself, area code, and a number. Alright, so I'm gonna save that, see what it looks like really quick. Alright, it goes up there. We are missing something. Let's see what I'm missing. I missed my tag TH, right? So this is gonna go there. I did not copy the whole thing. Alright, as far as I can fix it. Here we go. So nice and neat. We have that. All right. So now time for our TD tag. And what we should put there, right? So first we know the size should be, uh, or we're going to set this to three to merge all three cells together. Let's create the same format here. Start with the parentheses plus area code and there's a dash there, right? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go with a parentheses. Um, all right, we're gonna put the plus here. There's my plus right there. We're gonna have an input tag and we're gonna ID that, I don't know, country code. 
something like this and uh, let's say name it the same right there all right so for this we can set the type uh, this is a number right so we can actually go with the number this time or we can go with the telephone Right, tell is better, so let's go with the tell. It is a telephone number after all. And we can set the size uh, to three digits, right? Some area codes can go up to three, uh, but that is that. And then we're gonna close the tag. Don't forget that. And there is that, let's save that. Let's see what it looks like. It seems I'm missing something. No, it seems all right. So we have like a tiny little size here for entering area code. And uh, then let's say we need after this, we need the R. Let's take a look really quick. Right, so just uh, input dash another input, right? So I'm gonna have an input. Let's ID that um, area code. Name it the same thing. All right, and same thing. Type it would be tell, and let's put the size here. Or I think three would be enough. And then we're gonna have our dash, and then we have our next input. Right? Hopefully, you follow what I'm doing here. <coughs> Or maybe I need this differently. Yeah, that's why not the phone number would can be an ID, right? Or let's go number. Alright, name it a number. Type the same thing. Let's call it tell. And the size, let's say up to 10 digits, right? So it's big enough for all of us. Let's save that, see what this looks like. All right, so I've got the good form here. Let's even separate that, so that we can see better. All right, no change necessary right there. And that is that section of it. Next would be your email, right? So let's take a look, email, and we're gonna see these in actions. All right, so another TR, right? And same thing, we need the labels, We're just gonna borrow that, the whole thing. Let's call this email, right? And um, instead of that lengthy, label we're gonna type email here all right so far so good and we need something similar let's just type it all right the tag is wrong so td uh, and let's put a three all right and um, all right so what do we need here uh, we need the input can type ID that email obviously and what else we need here I'll name it same thing email and uh, type and make sure we have the type so there's a lot of type as you can see you can go with email email um, you can use that tag for validate your input uh, using even HTML. I'll show you when I submit the form. So what different does it make? Um, but that is that. So that should fix our next section. So three here, the label there. Let's take a look. Save it first. All right. So if you want to make this bigger, even you can also uh, work through it. But let it let it be. You see, even click there, my email shows up. Uh, phone number is US, so things things seems 
all right so far let's continue next we are going to do birthday same thing again tr for a row all right we need that label obviously a little bit of copy paste there and uh, we are going to make this birthday and uh, here also we're gonna put birthday all right and uh, we're gonna copy this here and uh, simply we are going to change a couple of things uh, this is going to be birthday name birthday again and the type instead of email we are going to put date so we have date date time and date time local just gonna go for date for now let's save that and see how that works refresh you can see the user can actually enter the date month day and year and you can select from the calendar right here all right so next we are going to create uh, the gender but let's take a look at our sample uh, the gender is a drop-down menu we already did that let's do the checkbox instead or maybe a radio button for now like up to you let's pick one and do it uh, let's do the radio first and maybe we add another uh, field for method of payment that we can use the checkbox instead Back to our code, um, gonna organize a little, so get rid of the extra space. I'm gonna copy the whole thing, so now we know what the procedures are. All right, so we're gonna make this a gender, right? And we're gonna make that gender, a little bit of change here. All right, for the input, we are going to have uh, three inputs because it's the radio button let's go back to our form um, so I'm gonna copy this input and uh, basically paste it uh, three times go to the next line one and two and three right so save it so far here we go but we have those we don't want that we want to change the type right so birthday uh, all right so input ID let's not have ID for this because these are the checkbox all right let's have a type and let's pick the radio button for this and let's have a name here name here and let's call it gender and we can set the value for that to be let's say male let's say that let's do the same thing uh, for gonna copy that three times since I already typed things here and paste paste because this type are the same and this one we are going to make it female and the other one we're gonna make it other right all the names are the same because we grouped them up all right so type is the same let's save that let's see what this looks like so far refresh here you go we have those button but there's nothing in front of it right so you see they grouped up because of the naming uh, put the name all the same so we can only select one at a time uh, we are gonna put something in front of them let's say mail and we can even break to the next line here same thing here for the female Let's break to the next line. You don't need to keep it in the same line. You can separate them if you like. And let's say other. All right, save. 
refresh here we go so you can select one all right so this is your radio button let's do the next since i'm on the uh what do you call it radio buttons let's do the uh, checkbox also uh, and see the difference i'm going to copy this structure here for the radio buttons to save time and just change that to payment it's a method of payments or whatever you like you call it payment all right and same thing size the same instead of radio we are going to check and see what we have we have range we're gonna do one range also so we get the gist of it all right so look our checkbox oh i'm putting it in the name my bad that is why we should align things properly checkbox box here we go and uh, let's just call them payments all right so let's just align it I don't make that mistake again all right okay so let's call this payment payment and payment let's uh i don't know let's put uh, credit debit so credit debit and maybe cash that would be ideal and cash right Let's optimize that, save it, refresh, there we go. So this one you can select couple because those are checkbox are done, they are different than the uh, radio buttons. Also, we can pre-select one of them if you want by default. So here, let's say we wanna check this and also let's say when you refresh the page let's see so when you load the page up you see the credit is already set by default to be checked we can get rid of that and select the debit instead this is all up to you here we go so this is uh, pre-selecting one if you need to in uh, different cases and circumstances let's also do uh, uh, let's call it a select a color uh, button or basically you can also select the button let's also cover that type of the input so what I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do the two things at the same time on the on this section one would be selecting the color the other one would be selecting or uploading a file uh, through this form so let's have a structure here i'm just gonna uh, create this from scratch because things get messy sometimes there we go and uh, first thing first the label is pretty much the same so we need two labels here so we're gonna take this one <coughs> And uh, let's say two. So one would be select a color. And the other one would be select uh, or upload the file, let's say. All right. So for with me, hopefully, uh, let's save it and see what this looks like. So we have these two. We're gonna have uh, two cells that it can actually do so. Let's start with selecting colors. So here, what we're gonna do? This is simple. We are going to add a TP tag here, and uh, we can have an input tag inside and simply we are going to select the type color and that lets us 
select the color, simple as that. So let's name it and colors. A color. All right. Just let's save it, see what it looks like. Here we go. So you have this guy here. You click on it, it gives you um, basic color selection, customized color selection, or if you know your RGB or HSL, you can actually just type it in and create your own custom color to upload. Let's just go with gray. All right. Or blue or whatever you want to. Okay, so for the uploading file, um, this is also simple. However, you can specify what kind of file the user can upload. So let's talk about that for a second. So here it is, instead of color, this time I'm going to do file and let's call it my file for the name. And here I'm going to add the attribute accept. So we can tell what kind of format we can accept. Let's say doc or let's say doc dox. Or we can even say uh, from what application you can upload the file. Let's get application and MS Word. There's many you can keep typing, it's up to you. Just I think that three is enough. <clears throat> we can test that in a second. Let's save it, refresh the page, and here it is. Uh, you can see you have your choose file. If you click on it, it opens that. Look at the custom file, and we have doc, doc. X and, and any windows, uh, you see there's a bunch of files I can see, so you can also see all the files, but usually this is what it is, we specify what type you can upload here. Um, next order of business, I try to keep this short, let's talk about the range type of input, uh, which is, okay, let me just organize a little, uh, same thing, again. Our tag. Um, let's have my title here. So copy that. All right. So this one uh, would be. Let's say we have an audio setting that you can go for. Let's change this. All right. So I forgot to change those four here. So that would be color. That is file. All right. Now pay attention when you copy paste. So this is with the audio. All right. So save that. Right there. We're good to continue. Um, I am going to add a TV tag again. No problem. Um, make sure you have the right span for the size. And now what we can do, okay, let's give it a class. We can do that later on. Um, we're gonna have the input. And now the type, we can select something called a range. So you give me some sort of range of inputs. You can ID that, let's say volume or whatever you like to. I'm gonna put volume here. And same thing, we're gonna name it volume again. For store that, uh, we can set the minimum. We can start from zero if you like. Usually volumes works that way. Uh, we can go to max, so this is the range we can set up. And you can also control step. So we can change that by 10, you can modify to 20, so it depends what you want. All right, so. Uh, Let's refresh. You can see you have a slider here that you can actually play around. So each of these deviation is 10. You can put 20 and that change that to 20. So there's five of them now because there's a total of 100. All right, so let's keep it 10. We also add, let's add a label here, even in the bottom. That would be nice. So let's have a, just a label. 
And let's keep it in the same TD, right? So we don't want that to be separated because we already merged three cells here. So we just have it here, that's fine. Let it label, we're gonna go for uh, volume. Save it, and we should have a volume here. You can move it to the next line. Let's put a brick here, so you have it underneath. If you like, it's up to you where you want it, right? So let's keep it in front of it. I think that's a better choice here in this case. All right, and that is that. You can also do whatever you want. Okay, let's move on. Um, all right, so back to our form. So we have pretty much everything. Uh, we're gonna talk about different components when I'm done with the form. Let's go back to this. Let's add this uh, comment section with the text field. See how that works. All right, so same thing. Uh, if we're going to add our TR tag here, open and close. Uh, a label so a copy paste from the top to make our life easier so we're gonna call this comment no problem there and uh let's put here the same thing comments let's say and questions right so so far so good let's refresh that so we can see it here now for the t the tag all right, open and close. I'm gonna use something, <clears throat> as we know, called uh, text area, right? So open and close. So that's that. We know our TD has to be basically three here, the span of it. All right, so that is saved. So the text area, <clears throat> we can uh, put something here. Let's say, please uh, send me your comments, your, your questions. All right, so let's save that. Let's see what this looks like. Here we go. You can control the size of this, obviously. Um, we can change the, let's say, let's keep it, let's name it first. Uh, let's call it comments. And um, we can set the rows to 10 and columns to, let's say, 50. So it gives us a nice little box here. There we go. So it's bigger. You can see that. Oh, my grammar is actually working on it. So that's nice. Here we go. All right. So now I have to fix that. All right. Save. Now, this is pretty much that. You can control it as you want. Let's go talk about the buttons and how they interact with the form and how they submit it. All right, so first thing we're gonna organize that. And simple enough, I'm gonna keep both buttons. Let's, let's say we need a submit buttons and we can have a reset button to clear your forms up. Uh, all right, so we're gonna have just two cells here, um, TD, um, one and another one, and each button goes there as we desire. All right, um, we can do different things here as we speak. We can have all right, so we can have our inputs tags here, so that and that. So let's make this one. All right, so let's make this one bigger than the other because that's our submit button. Let's make that three and leave one for the for the reset. All right. We can ID this uh, to submit. And we can select the type. We have a type submit. I'm gonna do that first and then I'll tell you how to be modifying. 
and the volume volume would be something, right? Let's say that see well, how that works. There we go. So it gives you a nice little button that you can click and it's sub it right up. I don't set any action for my form or what it's supposed to do, so it does not do anything. We're gonna complete that section after I'm done. Um, so this is one way to go, and we can also do the same thing here uh, for our reset. And we are going to set the type reset. Let's put the volume also. Or clear maybe. Right. Let's refresh that. Here we go. This is all already. I think I put too much of here. Maybe two. All right. I think I put it in the wrong spot here. Yeah. So this has to be PR. All right. Let's track what I'm doing here. Right there. Right. This has to be TR. Actually, we don't need that at all. Right, so that's your row. Okay, so we are going to now put three. Now makes sense. There we go. So that's good. We're going to centralize that if you want to using CSS. That's not a problem. That's what we can do at the end. I will sub in and let's say if I type something, it clears it up, right? So whatever you put in the form. You can clear it with using that. But this is boring and it's, uh, we can also do other things. Let's talk about uh, the type image here. So if you recall in the beginning, I did create, let's find that folder. I create, uh, here we go, a uh, two image that I can use as a submit and reset. I'm going to um, use a button type and also input type to use both so you guys familiar with all sort of things you can do here for the buttons let's start with the input so instead of the values i mean the type submit i can simply go image and then you can go okay so i want the source that to let's see what you have right there so pick this guy here and the rest is pretty much the same. So let's say that. There we go. So my button shows up. It still does the same thing. It's not submitting anything. Uh, it, what it does here, you can see the information submitted, right? So first name, there's nothing in there. So we'll, we're going to talk about that in a second. Let's finish our button. Then we get back to this, right? All right, should we move that? There we go. And for this guy, I am going to even modify you can do the same thing for the reset but let's even have a button let's make it exciting a little um let's id the resets or the type also we're gonna keep the reset here right uh what we're gonna do also let's say that all right i forgot the source all right, let's start this over. All right, so we're gonna have a button here this time. Open and close, and inside the button, we are going to put an image. So using all combination of what we learned so far, why not? And uh, let's pick the reset here for this image, and uh, then let's have an alternative called clear, just in case the image didn't show up. And that is that. The button type, I'll make that reset. So you can do that as well. Save it. There we go. So it's a little bit different, but that's fine. Let's see it works. There we go. So you reset what I put in there as we speak, right? Good. So 
Let's uh, fill out our form and see how that works. Let's say some memory. Let's put the password one two three four five <coughs> six. Let's keep the Toronto Ontario. Make it Canada. All right, so four one six. That is not my phone number. Seven seven seven. Seven 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 seven. All right. And let's put the email here, so I'm, right? And you, you see, I, I, on purpose, I put the wrong type of email. I will see that's why we set this as an email here. You can find us fast right there, so it tells us. We can date here, right there. And uh, let's make mail. This, all right. So let's pick a file here. Volume and a bunch of things here, and let's press submit. Here we go. You see, the first thing it shows is it doesn't have an at, and that's why the type email become handy. Let's put that whatever. Here. Come. All right. So now I submitted it, and look at this. So this is the first name. That's the name I said. It has some the last name is like Barry. Password is right there. See Toronto, uh, Province Ontario. They separated by and. So all this information will send to the server. Uh, we can actually make decision here by the type. If you remember, here you can set the method either get or post here in your form. As we know, let's say, here we go. There's a couple of notes on that. Uh, the get, let me just it, that you can see better. I pass form data inside the URL in name value purse as I seen here, right? And that's a default of your forms method of get or setting data. And there's limit of 3,000 characters, and using your uh, is visible. Here we go. This will visible to URL. However, if you use post, it's not that. So the post uh, basically it just use the uh, the data inside the body of the HTTP request, so it cannot be shown in the URL. So this is some action here. Let's say let's assume you have a PHP file, and let's say action PHP. I can create that really quick, but it's not enough time for this session. Try to keep it under one hour. Uh, here we go. Let's uh, refresh that on the server. Let's delete everything. 11. There we go. So right now, let's see, hopefully I saved everything. Uh, if you submit, it loads this guy up. You don't see any information passing here. It's not visible, right? Um, as we speak, but by the default, things are basically get. So if you don't mention anything, all right, so not the PHP that you can find it. Let's go back, go submit. You see, you don't see that anymore. Here we go, it does not show, right? Okay, so let's get back to the get. That's pretty much it. I try to summarize as much as possible cover all sort there's many you should read w3 school for more tags attributes and whatever you need you also can style it even better using the uh, css we're gonna go through the how we can implement css functionality to do a couple of things on forms which is really helpful in the future thank you